Welcome to this video about planetary migration in a disk and this particular video is going to concern type 3. So in previous videos I had a look at type 1, type 2 but in this one we're going to have a look at type 3. So uh, a recap if you haven't seen the other two videos uh, is that planets basically don't stay on their same orbit. They do change their orbits, they wander around and there's a there's a variety of different mechanisms that can actually be responsible for that. The one we're interested in is the movement in a disk. So this disk orbits the star, and this is during the formation processes of a planet. So the planet resides in a disk whilst it's still growing. The star hasn't fully formed yet because the disk material is still falling onto the star, which is known as accretion. And once that star starts hydrogen fusion in its core, that disk then becomes dissipated and we're left with just the, the planetary system or a debris disk. So the bit we're interested in here is that movement in the disk whilst it's still forming. And where does it all start? Well, stars form from the collapse of large gas clouds. So they gravitationally collapse and they heat up in their core to a point where you get hydrogen fusion. And during that process, it's these young stars have disks around them. So it's a consequence of that formation process of the star, you get these disks forming, and it's the planets that form in those disks that we're interested in. So you have a disk around the star, the planets then form in that disk before the star has fully formed. And there's a few images there of disks around stars. They're all different shapes and structures. Some of them may indicate there's actually planets there already. Some may be undergoing planet formation. It's worth noting actually that we can't directly image these planets, although we are getting better. So the bit we're interested in here is the formation process in the disk. So these planets form in the disk. As they're orbiting around in the disk, they are growing in size, so they are attracting nearby material, which then falls onto the planet. They then continue to grow, and that's essentially how they grow. And during that process, they actually can move inwards or outwards. So you get an inward migration or an outward migration, depending on the type of migration that we are interested in. So this migration process in the disk as they're forming can or is thought to explain why we see such unusual configurations so we look at stars and exoplanets and one example that stands out is hot jupiters so these are large gas giants very close to their stars now they cannot form where they are they're too close they're too big there's not enough material or mass in the disk close to the star for them to grow in the normal manner so that suggests that they've actually moved from somewhere else in the disk to where they currently are so this is thought to be one of the mechanisms that explains these systems that we actually do find um, out there in space so there are three main types of migration we looked at type one and two in previous videos so type one was a small terrestrial planet so like Earth or Mars size, it doesn't significantly alter the structure of the disk. So they're not big enough to distort the disk in any meaningful manner. Type 2, once they get to a certain mass, it's so around about Saturn size, they can clear out a gap in the disk. So they gravitationally clear material out in the area of their orbit. So you get this gap forming. And then the, the migration types change. It doesn't, know, it doesn't necessarily migrate in the same manner when it transitions from one to the other. Now, type three is the same as type one, same sort of planet, same sort of disk. There's no main structural change to it, but you have a more turbulent flow in the disk. So remember, it's a gas disk. It's You've got like vortices there, eddies, and the planet interacts with those and changes the way that it moves around in the disk. So that's type three. So it's worth noting at this point about viscosity. So low viscosity disks can support vortices and a turbulent flow. What do we mean by viscosity? Well, as an example, you can see on the screen here, on the left hand side, you've got a low viscous fluid. And on the right hand side, you've got a much higher viscosity fluid. So it's a lot thicker. And it probably makes sense looking at this that actually, the low viscosity one is easier to get things like eddies and vortices and a more turbulent flow than the thicker one. Um, and this is the case for 
planetary disk or sorry the, um, the disks around stars where the planets are forming so on the left here you've got a low viscosity fluid which is kind of in Jupiter's atmosphere and you can see the storms in comparison to what you have on the right which is a higher viscosity fluid which is something like honey um, or a syrup or something like that and it again should be obvious to see that one of them is going to be easier to support things like a vortex or a more turbulent flow and it's these low viscosity disks that the planets are forming in that are going to support this sort of flow and again you can see here a more turbulent flow and you've got lots of kind of eddies forming vortices and just imagine if you've got a planet in that sort of a flow it's going to interact with those and it will change the way that it moves <clears throat> its behavior its migration rate is going to reflect that so as we mentioned before type 1 and type 3 are pretty much the same the difference is you've got a more turbulent flow in type 3 and those planets are interacting with those vortices and that will then alter the way that it actually migrates so in type 1 the migration rate was fairly smooth so as it moved inwards because it was typically an inward migration uh, in most cases due to the imbalance of the inner and outer spiral waves it's a fairly smooth process it doesn't have sudden movement and it doesn't change massively so it's a fairly smooth inward movement basically or migration rate type 3 however is the opposite so it may undergo a normal type 1 migration where it's a bit smooth and then it interacts with a vortex <clears throat> or some of this turbulent flow and then you get a sudden rapid migration which then stops again and it happens in kind of bursts so you get sudden inward migration or outward migration depending on the specifics of the system mostly inward and so you just get these sudden rapid migration um, due to the interaction with this more turbulent flow that is not present in the type 1 migrations now it is worth noting and something I didn't mention in the previous videos and this is just a theory really it's very difficult to actually prove this to be the case we know something's occurring because planets are not where they formed so there's again hot Jupiters they're too close to their star so they definitely don't form where they currently are and migration is one mechanism that kind of puts them where they are so it is the theory when we actually see these disks it's very very difficult to actually observe the migration occurring due to the time scales and the distances that they are away so it's just worth bearing in mind that it's an idea not necessarily 100 percent correct thank you for watching and if you enjoy then check out some of the other videos